what was your impression when you met me and we started hanging out and doing things together? I, I'd love to hear from your perspective what you yeah. think about it. Okay. Uh, so I think the first day, because uh, I think we went to this house uh, of a widow, mm -hmm. and I showed you uh, the house like, oh, I think we built this house for $500. Mm -hmm. And you didn't even speak a word. Yeah. Uh, and to me, that was like, Oh, you know, that's how these people operate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, quiet. Yeah, yeah, quiet, but also like, oh, I think he just wants to, you know, rob from me, you yeah. know, yeah, get <laughs> yeah. some money from me because, oh, yeah, 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 he he wants to take advantage uh, advantage of me. Mm -hmm. uh, but you surprised me. Hey everyone, and welcome to another Donorcy Partner Interview. Today, I'm excited to have one of the biggest influences on my entire life, Blessings Shubambo. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much. Absolutely. So we will be right back. I'm going to first show you a quick one minute and 30 second clip of a video that we made for Blessings several years ago. I was the videographer and you were the subject <laughs> and we told your story. So we'll be right back after this. My name is Blessings and my life is a miracle. The place where I came from is in the middle of nowhere. It's about eight hours from the city and about four hours to the nearest hospital. I lived in a village that was surrounded by hills and life was just in this village. And coming out of this village was by the grace of God because what I knew was nothing else apart from this small world. My friends and my family still lives there, but for some reason, God chose me and that's why I'm here today. While I was in school, a preacher shared with me the gospel of Jesus Christ for the first time. It was really hard for me to get it and understand it. The reason being, my dad was an alcoholic and that made it really difficult for me to understand what the love of God was all about. But one day I came across a verse, my beautiful verse, the verse of my heart, John 3 verse 16. And God spoke to me through this verse and completely changed my life and completely transformed me. After meeting that preacher and doing well in school, God gave me the grace to come out of this village and had the privilege of attending African Bible College. And it was at African Bible College where I was given the tools to be able to give back uh, to my community. Today, with my friends, we run an organization called Live Love, and we seek to help the least of this. And we do this by offering a set of holistic services to the villagers around. So we run mobile clinics, and we help girls stay in school long, and we also do sports program. And all this is done alongside spiritual development. My life is a miracle. And my goal in life is to see similar transformation brought to the people of Malawi, the people who are just like me. Will you help me transform Malawi? Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the video. Now you have a quick sense of Blessing's life. And now we're going to take a deep dive and hear more about your story and what you're working on today. Okay. So, Blessings, why don't you start off by telling us where you grew up? So, I grew up, um, I call the place in the middle of nowhere, uh, I think as my video suggests as well. Uh, I, I call that in the middle of nowhere because uh, there was no hope for me. Uh, I was surrounded by hills uh, and life for me was just in that little village. Uh, and so uh, when, when I look at how I've gotten out of that, uh, it's, it's a miracle. Uh, but at the same time, uh, I see that I've been raised up, you know, to do much more. So uh, I could describe my place as, you know, a place without electricity. I could describe my place without um, <clears throat> no running water. Uh, there was there was just so much going on that there was no hope uh, as a little kid, you know. What were the schools like in this place where you were growing up? 
uh, I remember the school I used to go to uh, was a dirt school, uh, like you could smear with dirt and each year it, it was rising until like where you were sitting, you're next to the window, you could see outside <laughs> yeah. because it was not cement, uh, but there were also no uh, like glass windows or something to block the windows. It was just, uh, you know, open. So it was an environment where uh, it was survival of the fittest, like if you made it, uh, you were really, um, you know, chosen uh, to do that because I can only remember maybe three people out of that school that have made it up uh, mm -hmm. or made it out uh, of that community or that village that are doing well. So can you tell me what life is like for the people who are still in that village to mm -hmm. this day? I'm sure you probably know some of them. Uh, yes, because I've gone back uh, yeah. to, to that community. Uh, actually, when I was in college, I took some of my uh, friends, uh, my classmates. Uh, mm -hmm. We went back to visit my home village and some professors as well. So it's a place that is still, you know, I would call... There's a lot of hopelessness because uh, most of my friends that I was uh, with in school... Uh, like they do drinking uh, a lot, uh, which makes them, you know, very poor. Uh, yeah. The conditions are still uh, the same. Actually, there are power lines that have gone through now, uh, but it's still less people that have access, you know, to electricity and clean water. And there's just a lot of uh, poverty uh, that, you know, just kind of grips you where you don't know where the future is going to take you. Mm -hmm. So my going back there was to encourage people to say, you know, if you work hard, you can do it. There's, there's a life uh, mm -hmm. out there, but um, it's still a very, uh, very poverty stricken place. Right. Now you're on a worldwide tour right yeah. now, <laughs> doing fundraising for some of your efforts. So you yeah. were just in Australia yes. like last week, and yes. now here you are in D.C. Yes. You're going out to Arizona yes. later on. I, your flight's later tonight. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, what, what do some of these people from your home village mm -hmm. think of your life now? Mm -hmm. You're being interviewed, you're, you've got like such a different life than, yeah. than them. What, yeah. what do they think of that? Um, one, I've been an encouragement, uh, you know, to my community because now they see hope. They, you know, when they see their children, they can say, uh, if you work hard, you'll be like blessings, yeah. you know. Uh, but for some of my friends, you know, they're very shy, like, to meet me because they feel like I'm very high and they're very low. So, like, when I go back home, I have to put myself at their level uh, in order for us, you know, uh, to have a conversation or to chat or uh, to have memories from uh, back within. So they're both uh, uh, reactions, different reactions. Mm -hmm. uh, for, them, for some of them, it's like, uh, you know, you got to work hard, you got to be like blessings. For some of them, they feel like, oh, now he's way high up there, you know, mm -hmm. we cannot touch him, you know, <laughs> yeah. we cannot uh, compete with him. But uh, to me, uh, it's, it's, it's an encouragement to, to so many of the young people that are hopeless uh, that because when I see those boys I see me you know mm -hmm. uh, when I see the parents I see my parents uh, but we've been able to come out of out of that to be able to be where we are now right now I've never been to your village but yes. I've been to many villages that are yeah. similar to your village yes. and um, one of the things that is obvious is that you are very unique mm -hmm. not everyone mm -hmm. ends up with the life path that you've had yeah so what do you think it is that makes you unique uh, I think growing up in a in a village set up like that I think gave me a passion for people uh, a passion to 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 change uh, my 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 countrymen you know uh, people that have been in the very situations and me because most of the people when they do that they they try to shun away and and forget uh, what they had gone through yeah. uh, but I think our history should propel us to do more uh, for for other for others because I think we see that with with Rwanda uh, you know their history they have not gone back and say oh this is how we were but it has propelled them to be a country that's actually very doing very well yeah, when you look at impressive. innovation and uh, even cleanliness and the things that they're doing so I think that's a very good example that we have to emulate as 
as as Africans, as people that have grown up with problems, because those problems should propel us to do good for others. Mm -hmm. uh, because if I grew up uh, as a poor person, I shouldn't look back and say, you know, oh, they can remain <laughs> as poor as they are, because I know now there are a lot of books that, you know, maybe they uh, they're trying to manipulate how uh, not really manipulating, maybe that's not a good word, but uh, they're just cautioning how you, you give, you know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, uh, but like my, helping her. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, things like those, um, I mean books like those, mm -hmm. uh, but there will still be a, the poor. Mm -hmm. Like what does your heart say? So for me, I think my heart is, has been always to, to lift uh, those people up, uh, yeah. so that because I know that's who I was. But because there have been some people that have lifted me up, mm -hmm. that's why I'm where I am. So I appreciate that a lot because then it makes me focus um, on, 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 on people rather than what did I do, yeah. uh, what, why did I give them. But then someone somewhere, maybe not all of them, but someone will appreciate, uh, they will be molded into like what I am today mm -hmm. and be able to be someone for my country yeah. because I know I'm doing a lot uh, yeah. for my country. And and it's because of the past and because of the area that I, I had grown in. So it has taught me a lot actually mm -hmm. to appreciate what life is yeah. and what I can do for others. I wasn't planning on bringing this up, <laughs> but I have, as you were talking, I have this vivid memory yeah. of the two of us. And I remember I had read When Helping Hurts and I was yes. early in my days in Malawi and yes. I was talking to you about it. Yeah. And I was saying, you know, sometimes people don't want to, uh, they don't want to give because of this, you know, this problem that maybe yes. what they're giving turns into something negative. Yes, yes. Yeah, and so as I was learning about that, I was explaining those ideas to you, and there was specifically a baby, I think, yeah. that was in that was sick. Mm -hmm. And I was saying, well, should we help the baby or yeah. not? Yeah. And you were saying, Gret, what if the baby dies? <laughs> and I was like, I was so in my philosophical yeah, yeah. way of thinking about things yeah, that I, yeah. I just removed the human aspect yeah, of it. And yeah. I, that was something that you taught me very early. This was yeah. years ago. I mean, yeah. this was like six or seven, five or six years ago yes, when, yeah. when we had this conversation. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I, I, okay, so I want to use that as an opportunity mm -hmm. to, to pivot yeah. and hear uh, how did you... What was your impression when you met me and we started hanging out and doing things together? I, I'd love to hear from your perspective what you think about that. Okay, uh, so I think the first day, because uh, I think we went to this house uh, of a widow mm -hmm. and I showed you uh, the house like, oh, I think we built this house for $500 mm -hmm. and you didn't even speak a word. Yeah. Uh, and to me, that was like, Oh, you know, that's how these people operate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, quiet. Uh, yeah, quiet, but also like, oh, I think he just wants to, you know, rob from me, you yeah. know, yeah, get <laughs> yeah. some money from me because, oh, yeah, 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 he he wants to take advantage uh, advantage of me. Mm -hmm. uh, but you surprised me. Uh, mm -hmm. Because you didn't talk anything and you didn't say, I think the days went by and then you came back. That's when you had said, oh, is there any other widow that we can take a picture of? And then you sent that video, actually, yeah. a very small camera, mm -hmm. uh, not like this. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, but you sent it to your mom and then uh, we, we were able to raise some money. Mm -hmm. Actually, you were able to raise mm -hmm. some money through your mom and we were able to, uh, to build houses. So uh, your impression actually changed. So, yeah, I was like, oh, actually, you know. So when you he, first met me, I yeah. was like, this guy probably thinks I'm trying to scam yes. yeah. him. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, yeah. With, I think I remember that meeting that, that person, you just built that house. Yeah. And I was so... I think that was, I was like so surprised. I was like, I had no idea that you could build a house for, for that little. And yeah. um, it just got my brain spinning. Yeah. And so um, I just, and I, honestly, I thought this is the coolest thing. Like, I felt like I discovered this, like, yeah. it's not cool. Like, poverty is not cool, yeah. but being able to address it. And yeah. like, I'm connected to people with a lot of resources yeah. and yeah. being able to bring these people together. Yeah. I was like, whoa, what an opportunity. Yeah. It was just so exciting for me yeah. to think about. Yeah. And I could also add because I think I kind of minimize it because like uh, he is a young guy. Yeah. I don't know because because uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I've been uh, you know like people that come are like you know big people and you know yeah. they try to convince you. But you just came in as a young guy mm -hmm. and I'm um, like I don't know what he's doing. Uh, I don't know what he's gonna 
can accomplish, but uh, uh, you know, uh, God can use anyone, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, especially I think the young people. Uh, we have all the energy, and the, uh, mm -hmm. we can connect. The we can the is passion there, yeah, is there. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, you changed my my impression. <laughs> well, I'm honored to hear that after all these years. Um, so, what the, so, anyways, you know that you're uh, you haven't had a chance to read this yet. No, because I'm you just got from Malawi. To so read it. we've got five books that have lessons we'll be able to take with him and give to his friends and stuff. So people will be fighting you for these books. But you know, you're a big part of my story, yeah, and you're I'm you're all over this I'm book. Honored. And there's pictures of you in the back. <laughs> Um, I was just showing blessings right beforehand, but there's a picture of blessings right here. This is him teaching at a school. Uh, this is at the village at Fridays, the village, yes. uh, and then this is us talking. And so, anyways, you're a big part of this story. Thank you so much. And um, another big part of the story is Girl Shine Academy. So I didn't want to build Girl Shine Academy at first, right? I wanted to build a clinic. Yes. But you you knew about it. So why don't you tell us about Girl Shine Academy? Um, so let's let's start. Can we talk a little bit about how you wanted to build a clinic? Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. So Greg comes to me and said, ah, "We we want to build to build a clinic." And I asked him a question: "Who is gonna lead this clinic?" Yeah. And he says, "Of course you." And I said, "No, no." Um, but I had the passion um, mm -hmm. uh, about building a school, uh, a girls' school, uh, and there was someone also very important that I knew had a passion about girls' education, and that was, that is. Yeah. Uh, who is leading Girls Shine right now. Um, but girls in Malawi face a lot of challenges um, just from, from the home area where they have uh, to work before they go to school. Culture is a big, is a big part that, you know, uh, brings them down uh, to a level where they're not respected. They'll get pregnant early, they'll get um, married early, and that destroys, you know, their future. And that's where Girls Shine uh, was born. Uh, and I'm, I'm all glad to, to, to report that we have about 300 uh, girls there. That's incredible. Uh, and, and, and when you go into these villages, a girl will not look in your eyes because they are very shy. Um, they, there is a word for it because they, they're not confident of yeah. themselves because they know they are abused. They're or, like subservient. Uh, yes, yeah, yes, nice. yes. But when you come to Girls Shine uh, Christian Academy, you know, you find girls that are confident. So confident. I was just there. Yeah. <laughs> They were like, yeah, so you ask them what you, you want to be, uh, they'll tell you that and why. Uh, and that's someone that is reasoning. Uh, and for us, we're also looking at the communities of where these girls have been undermined and to be able to be part of their story uh, to do that. And so many of you, you know, that have uh, donated uh, to, to building the school and where it is now, uh, we're really thankful. Uh, but that's Girls Shine. I think we can take an hour describing it, yeah. but it's a place uh, that has... Um, uh, become uh, a hope uh, for girls in Malawi. It's a place mm -hmm. where girls build the confidence, they build the character. It's not just about education. It's yeah. about a whole human being. It's about this girl child uh, that will be able to stand up, uh, not just for herself, for her family, you know, for, for her community uh, and for Malawi uh, as a whole. And that's what we are looking for. And yeah. that's what we are doing at Girls Shine. It's an, like it's really an incredible thing, and I remember thinking, I remember telling you, whenever we get this school going, mm -hmm. I want my contribution to be yeah. the fundraising. Yeah. But this is yeah. like this is you and Tia. Yeah. I want you, yeah. you two to run it. Yeah. And um, so when we launched it, we launched we, we fundraised the funds, and we there were 120 girls that first year. Yes. But you and Tia have taken care of everything, and every year you're bringing more girls into the school. Mm -hmm. And um, you're still fundraising to this day to put more classrooms and more uh, dormitories and every single, it's always, always growing. And it's so cool to see that. And that's all you and Tia. I've completely stepped back because I wanted, I didn't want to be the American who's like trying to meddle in yeah. a Malawian girls. Like what, what do I know about that? But yeah. like, these, these people know what they're doing. And mm -hmm. a lot of people trust you guys. Yeah. They trust you and they trust Tia. And we want to thank you for that. You know, it's so hard for people that, um, you know, donate. 
uh, and their name is nowhere to, to, to be seen. But I think we, we have to shift to an era where we are empowering the locals because that's where you see the beauty. Uh, I know it takes trust and it takes time, uh, which for you because you were there. Uh, mm -hmm. But I think we can also learn from, uh, from people like you uh, to say when the locals are empowered, uh, you know, that's when uh, these days we talk about sustainability because then ownership, uh, people own it. Even the girls themselves, mm -hmm. they own it because they know, oh, they are our local, uh, you know, Malawians figures that are there and running, uh, running the school. They're also learning leadership skills from there. So it's a very uh, rare thing to do uh, yeah. because there's the issues of trust, there's the issue, but I, I want to tell the audience audience here that that's empowerment, uh, that's empowering the locals, uh, which becomes something that they own and something that they take care of. I 100% agree. And I, I want to emphasize that when you talk about trust, that is, it's a, it's the key ingredient yeah. to any type of charity. Yes. And so you can't have charity without having trust. And so people are always saying, how do I know my money's working? Yeah. How do I know yeah. this? I want 100% guarantee. Yeah. And you know, they want all of these different things, but, but at its very core, if you're going to bring people out of poverty, mm. you need, it requires some trust. Yes. It requires relationships yes. and it requires trust. You yeah. have to have that. Yes. And so um, any kind of expectation that um, you can somehow like do good without trusting someone else. Mm -hmm. It's not going to happen. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, you you do want to find the most trustworthy people, mm -hmm. and I couldn't find two more trustworthy mm -hmm. people besides mm -hmm. you and Tia. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, all right. So we're about to launch. Mm -hmm. We've just recently launched a donor C partnership with Live Love Malawi, yes. and so you can go to donorsea.com slash Live Love Malawi, yes. and there's projects there for people in the village that you yes. have been serving for a while mm -hmm. and soon there will be projects for Girls Shine Academy mm -hmm. so we want to uh, make sure people check out donorsea.com slash live love Malawi um, when they go there they're going to see videos from from people from Nkanda village is mm -hmm. that right uh -huh. or yes. is it Chimpapa uh, it's Chimpampa okay Chimpampa so village yeah so uh, what is um, why don't you tell us a little bit about the work that your organization does there? Uh, so Live Love has been uh, a core uh, organization in this uh, rural community uh, of Lilongwe. Uh, and again, it's going to go back to where I grew up, no electricity, no yeah. running water. And we've been running a lot of projects. And Live Love is about connecting. And connecting, we are talking of building relationship. If you, before you do any project, build relationship. And that's what we've done for the past 10 years. Uh, we talk about building. Uh, building is looking at the whole human being. You know, they, they need food, they need shelter, they need earth, uh, they need social responsibility, uh, where like we've done um, uh, houses for orphans uh, and widows through uh, donacy and, and homes. Uh, we also empower. We have uh, built a kitchen. Uh, we've uh, built a sewing machine uh, mm -hmm. project house yeah. uh, where we're imparting skills and knowledge to the women that they can be able to stand up uh, for themselves so there's a lot of change it's a total transformation of someone uh, that's happening and all these are people from the rural areas so live love is impacting about 36,000 people if you you count uh, yeah. around that village uh, so there's a lot that is happening and you can also check us on Facebook live love Malawi mm -hmm. uh, and also on our website as yeah. well so the great thing about this village is that that's where I, that's like where I grew up, where my poverty <laughs> yes. and charity education, that's where I kind of grew up. Yeah. I went every Friday for three years, I would go to this yes. village. And um, yeah, it was just, uh, I learned so much from being around these people and yeah. seeing the work that you're doing. So um, I, I want to keep this short because we're going to have you back sometime and you're going <laughs> to do a second interview <laughs> the next time you're heading to Thailand or wherever it is you're going. But... You know, you've been, you've you got your master's here in America. Yes. You know America decently well mm -hmm. by now. Mm -hmm. um, having experienced America, mm -hmm. what what message? What do you think you would like to tell Americans mm -hmm. who might not know as much about global poverty as yeah. the two of us? Um, I would say there are people suffering uh, in the world, and it's real. Uh, and it's um, just I think a matter of us putting our hearts right, uh, because I know. Compared to Africa, we have the resources. People have the resources uh, in 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 uh, in Malawi, not in Malawi, but here in America. Uh, and if 
we are to lift someone up I think as we have already talked about trust I think find an organization find people you know that are doing that are doing good because what you do is lifting up humanity uh, despite your faith despite your religion despite whoever you are but I think lifting up someone uh, from their poverty I think it's something really great. Um, it's something that soothes not only you, but you are empowering, you know, the Africa, whether it's Asia, whether it's, uh, it's Thailand. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's, it's a powerful, it's a powerful thing to experience. Mm -hmm. um, because I think as, as kids, as, uh, as adults, uh, when we engage into helping humanity, I think that's, there's no greater purpose of, li uh, of living on this earth, I think, than lifting up uh, your own and your fellow um, uh, human human beings so I think to me it's uh, look at every at every book look at every charitable organization look for those that are doing the right thing um, because poverty is there and it's real and people are suffering and it might take you uh, as an individual to lift some of those people up that's a perfect way to end it blessings thank you for being here thank you so much great for inviting me anytime bye-bye